Welcome back to Plug Life Television and the launch of a brand new series, What Barriers? Balancing the Rapid Charge to Electric Vehicles. We're going to be looking at how we need to balance everything that's required in order to switch an entire nation's fleet of cars over to pure electric propulsion. And we're going to kick things off with how we're going to balance the grid. There are 31.3 million cars in the UK, which are driven an average of 7,800 miles per year. But what if they were all electric and they were all plugged in at the same time? The average home or destination charge point outputs 7 kilowatts of power, so the total demand if we all plugged in simultaneously would be 31.3 million times this figure, which is 219.1 gigawatts. Given that the average UK electricity demand is around 32 gigawatts, and the maximum electricity demand is nearer 50 gigawatts, this means that the total power demand of every car being plugged in simultaneously would be 7 times the average grid demand, which would easily trip the grid. At this point, some people may be tempted to immediately state that hydrogen makes more sense, but hydrogen produced via electrolysis, rather than from fossil fuels, requires three times as much energy to move a fuel cell car the same distance as an electric vehicle. Besides, this grid tripping scenario wouldn't happen. We don't all go to the petrol station at the same time, and we can be much more clever in the way that we charge our cars. What if we all used staggered smart charging to reduce the maximum power demand on the grid? A typical electric vehicle averages about 4 miles per kilowatt hour of electricity. Since EVs travel an average of 7,800 miles per year, this means that by dividing by 365 days per year, then 4 miles per kilowatt hour, then rounding up slightly, the average EV uses 5.4 kilowatt hours of energy each day. Since a 7 kilowatt charge point will supply 7 kilowatt hours of energy per hour, then the daily energy requirements of an EV can be comfortably supplied by a 7 kilowatt charge point within one hour. If we assume that most EVs will be plugged in between 6pm and 8am, this gives us 14 hours over which to charge all of the EVs in the country. This means if we smart charge all of the UK's cars overnight between 6pm and 8am, then the peak grid demand from EVs will be 14 times less than the peak demand from all EVs put together, which works out at 15.65 gigawatts. This is equal to half of the UK's average demand, which is still a large number but is not insurmountable, especially because we can be even smarter than this in the way that we charge our cars. We can take advantage of the fact that grid demand fluctuates throughout the day. Take this winter scenario with data taken from a day during the Beast from the East, a brutally cold and snowy few weeks in early 2018. Grid demand peaked at about half past six in the evening before tapering off to a low point between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Now imagine that the grid had kept running at 47 gigawatts overnight, which is about 3 gigawatts shy of the peak demand. The additional energy that could have been produced during this time is 136 gigawatt hours. Bearing in mind that there are 31.3 million cars in the UK, and if all of them were electric, they would require an average of 5.4 kilowatt hours of energy each day, then the total daily energy demand of every car in the UK being electric would be 169 gigawatt hours. This means that if we ran the grid at 47 gigawatts overnight, we would only need to source an extra 33 gigawatt hours of electricity overnight. In order to make up for this deficit between 6pm and 8am, we would need an extra 2.36 gigawatts of power over this period of time. This is less than 5% of the peak demand on the grid and could technically be provided by the existing grid, since we know from the graph that the grid ran at just over 50 gigawatts during the evening peak which is over 3 gigawatts higher than our proposed 47 gigawatt output. However, to maintain some reserve in the grid's capacity, let's look at supplying this extra power and energy through green means. A perfect example is the Dogger Bank offshore wind farm, which is currently under construction. It has a rated capacity of 4.8 gigawatts and, based on the performance of other offshore wind farms, will likely have a capacity factor of around 44.3%. It's worth taking some time to explain what the capacity factor is. A power plant's output will vary over the course of a year. If this power output is plotted against time, the area under the graph is the total annual energy output, or yield. The capacity factor is the annual yield divided by the theoretical maximum output of the power plant if it ran at 100% capacity for the entire year. So in the case of the Dogger Bank wind farm, which has a capacity of 4.8 gigawatts, its theoretical maximum annual energy yield is 4.8 gigawatts multiplied by 24 hours in a day multiplied by 365 days in a year, 
which is 42,048 gigawatt hours. Let's say that the wind farm produces 18,627 gigawatt hours of energy in its first year of operation. That means that its capacity factor is 18,627 divided by 42,048, which is 44.3%. Another way of looking at this capacity factor is that it's the equivalent of the wind farm running at a constant 44.3% of its maximum capacity for the entire year. In reality, Dogger Bank Wind Farm is likely to be running at much higher than 44.3% of its rated capacity in winter, when wind speeds are higher, especially during the beast from the east. Nonetheless, the average power that the wind farm will run at is 44.3% of 4.8 gigawatts, which is 2.13 gigawatts. Bearing in mind that we require an additional 2.36 gigawatts of power to meet the demand of all of the UK's cars overnight, this means that we now only require an additional 230 megawatts of power which over those 14 hours would produce 3.22 gigawatt hours of electricity. However, increasing electricity demand from EVs results in decreasing electricity demand from petrol and diesel cars. Many people forget to factor in the energy price of petrol. The UK produces approximately 14 million gallons of petrol and 11 million gallons of diesel every day. As detailed in an excellent article by David Heron, one gallon of petrol requires 6 kilowatt hours of energy to produce. About 4 kilowatt hours is heat in the form of steam, and 2 kilowatt hours is electricity. This figure ignores all energy associated with exploring for oil, extracting it and shipping it, then shipping petrol and diesel to fuel stations and pumping it into cars. We shall ignore the heat energy for now, and generously assume that it's all provided by a combined heat and power plant that is producing all of the electricity required for petrol refinement. If we use Grangemouth Refinery's electricity consumption as a representative example, the UK's oil refineries require a total continuous electricity supply of 972 megawatts to produce petrol and diesel. That's nearly a gigawatt of power just to produce fossil fuels. If we compare this to our remaining power deficit in order to charge all of the UK's EVs overnight, then that means that not only do we meet it by diverting electricity from refineries to EVs, but we end up with a 742 megawatt surplus. But there's more. Oil refineries run 24 hours a day. In fact, the UK's refineries use 9.72 gigawatt hours of electricity between 8am and 6pm, and 13.6 gigawatt hours of electricity between 6pm and 8am. This is enough to charge 1.8 million EVs during the day, and 2.52 million EVs overnight. Cumulatively, the UK's oil refineries use enough electricity to meet the daily energy requirements of 4.32 million EVs over a 24-hour period. However, this considers the total electricity consumption of the UK's oil refineries, not the 742 megawatts surplus that we face in our scenario. Recalculating based on our 742 megawatt surplus, we find that not only does the national grid have enough power and energy to charge all of the UK's cars overnight, but the surplus electricity from oil refineries is enough to cater for 3.29 million extra EVs every day. And we've not even mentioned storage yet. Well that's quite enough maths for one day, don't worry I'll give you a breather now, but hopefully it's quite obvious that even in a really harsh, exceptionally brutal winter, the national grid is already capable of charging every single car in the UK if it was electric. Now, the scenario that I've provided of everyone plugging in at the same time is completely unrealistic. Some people work night shifts, some people have bigger batteries in their cars than others, some people drive further than others, so there's already an element of natural staggering in there anyway. So we've provided a worst case scenario and showed it can work. So in reality, it's going to be even easier for the grid to switch. Now, there are a few unanswered questions within this episode, so don't worry, stay tuned for the thrilling conclusion in part two of the Balancing the Grid episode on Plug Life Television.